Hey, you're a cocoon master, right? What do you say to a quick little duel? What? You're no fun. Don't you know who I am? Ha! I can't believe it! I am the strongest, most handsome guy in the forest. I go by many names, such as Birdman. After all, I am the legendary man of the Dragonfly Forest. It's hard being so famous. Call me Kiki Nag. Of course, that's only if you can defeat me. Well, that's all for introductions. Here we go. are so powerful. I've heard the rumors, but Cocoon Masters really are powerful. So, you're from Cyrus, huh? Hmm. Well, now I've met two. If there's anything I can do for you, just ask me. From now on, we're friends. Calabas? Oh, you mean this powder? My friend Yamu from the Spider Forest gave it to me. The only thing you'll find here in the Dragonfly Forest is sleep spores. If you want some calabash, why not go talk to Yamu? Yamu and his family are very fond of rare and unusual things. So if you give them something valuable, just maybe... <laughs> But I warn you, they're very greedy and won't share with you so easy. Oh yes, you can have this too. Without it, you can't get inside. What? You haven't heard of him? Well, that's odd. My young friend was bragging so much. You don't know who it is? His name is Kelmar. He is strong, you know. He's my best friend. What? You're friends with him too? Oh, so it's you. The cocoon, the cocoon master he was talking about. Hey! Well now, it's a small world indeed. Kelmar has told me a lot about you. He said, no one is stronger than me, but strength does not make a powerful man. Strength alone is no match for what he has. Speaking of which, the power of man is so complicated, I just don't get it. Leaving already? Well, take this. It's proof of our friendship. Don't worry, you can have it. We'll be able to meet any time you use it. I'll tell you about myself next time we meet. Well, see you later. The unforgiven, the greedy, and at times like a child. Birdman.
so. This powder is ground from the leaves of the calabash. We must go report this to the chieftain at once. Although this confirms the existence of the calabash, this is not enough to save the entire village. You have no choice but believe what the Birdman said and venture into the Spider Forest. There are many types of divine spirits who know you that some can be quite malicious. If we can believe Kikinok, then it is true that the Forest Man has become the fallen spirit Mamon as told in Nagi legend. Mamon was an agent of Elrum, who drowned in material greed. This so angered Elrum that he punished Mamon by transforming him into a hideous form. It is said that Mamon was commanded to live the rest of his existence as the keeper of the divine tree. Kikinok is the divine spirit Amos, who indulged in lust, then... Then Yamu, the forest man, must be the divine spirit Mamon, who indulged in greed. Perhaps there is more about Yamu in the folk tales of Cyrus. The old gravekeeper Poto may know something. Why not ask him about the folk tales? must go to the spider forest and find Yamu, the forest man. Much treachery lies ahead in the spider forest. Tread carefully. Say, what was your father like? Huh? Oh, it's nothing. I was just wondering, that's all. Just a minute. We need to talk. It's hard to talk about it with Garai right here. Let's go outside. Go on ahead. I'll be right out. Oh, my, my new clothes they look nice, don't they? Mother Garai gave them to me. The Nagi dyed red is so pretty, isn't it? I'm sorry for asking you to come out of your way. It's just that it's hard to talk about things with Mother Garai around. We used to be able to talk about everything. It's strange, isn't it? Your mother comes by a lot while you're gone. She's really kind to me, and she might just be worried about me, but I'm sorry, I just can't stand it at all. Mother Garai may understand how she feels, 
but I sure don't. Purification is nothing but pain. Didn't your mother do it all because she loved your father? And then he just got up and left her because he couldn't stand to watch her suffer? How cruel! But why, even after all of that, does she still love him? Are all women like that? I can't say this in front of Mother Garai, but I really don't agree with that at all. I'm sorry if this upsets you, but I just couldn't live the way she does. No matter what happens, don't worry about me. Do your duty as our cocoon master. Just don't run off like your father. Your father, he's supposed to be a great man, right? I heard the story of the day he said goodbye to your mother. I heard that he was a kind man who always protected her. But how could such a man leave her? Do you call that kindness? The cursed brandings are a painful experience for a woman. But that's why I need you here with me. To your mom, your father's departure might have been an act of sympathy, but I don't agree. I would have felt betrayed. We're both in this together, so please stay here as the cocoon master of Cyrus. Me? Well, you know I really like you a lot. It's just that well, there's so much going on right now, you know? Why do we have to have so many rules and traditions? There's just no escape. I know some people hate the Nagi, but I'm an individual. I won't run away from them or anything just because it's hard. I might have married you because I had to, but I would never, ever leave you. All we ever talk about now are the village and cocoons, minions. I know now's not the time to be worrying about these kind of things, but it's just that I never get to see you anymore. If only things were different. I'm sorry. I don't even know what I'm trying to say. But I feel a little better now getting it off my chest. Thank you. Oh, I almost forgot. Take this. You'll probably need it. I don't know anything? Grown-ups always know what kids are up to. Thanks for helping me protect the fool. I can't believe Kelmar has such a good friend. This is a token of my thanks. Take it. If you need a more powerful weapon, Maybe I'll have... You've come back, I see. Is everything all right at home? I heard about those awful rumors going around at the silk mill. They say Fio and Mabu aren't getting along. It's not true, is it? Don't you pay attention to what they say. Hey, shush, honey. You're being rude. <laughs> That's none of our business. I 
can't stand it when she spreads rumors like this. Oh, women. What are you talking about? No. It's because you men are so undependable. You're always driving us crazy. See? Every time you open your mouth, you gotta badmouth me. Wait! I was only trying to help. Please take care of your mom and Mabu. Don't grow up to be an insensitive fool like this big guy. better weapons, but don't you get carried away. The weapon of the Cocoon Master ain't the sword. It's the power of your flute, right? That's what Raquette's always said. Mabu doesn't complain because she is a very strong-willed girl. But you must realize that it's all very hard for her. Protect her well. You are her man, after all. People may be saying things about your family, but don't listen to them. It's all nonsense. I... Theo is such a good person. Riquettes knew that well. But I mean, really, men aren't honorable like they used to be. What are we women to do? They're just so unreliable. Mabu doesn't complain. You're back. So, how is your work going? Don't overdo it. Tell me if there's anything I can do for you. I was concerned about Mabu, so I've been talking with her while you were away. We talk about things like the Nagi, life, your father and me. But maybe I am just bothering her. She probably doesn't need both Garai and her mother-in-law looking over her shoulder all day long. I wanted to let her know that there are many ways to express love for another. 
Your father and I wanted to preserve our type of love, even if it meant breaking tradition. Don't you see? In time, perhaps you and Mabu too will understand. True purification is achieved when your two hearts come to beat as one. More than anything, I do not want your marriage to fall victim to tradition or your sense of duty. I have never told you about my last day with your father, have I? On that final evening, your father said to me, no matter how long I uphold tradition as cocoon master and cure much evil in the world, I believe that true purification must also cure the one I love. If Elram is the true God, then the answer must lie in the forest. Once there, I shall unlock the key to true purification and will then return to your side. As an Augie, I was raised to believe that I would never have a choice in life. I accepted my fate no matter how awful it would be. But upon hearing your father's words, a sense of peace settled upon me, the likes of which I had never felt before. Right then, I felt liberated from fate and tradition. For the first time in our lives, we are doing something for just ourselves. I will never perform another purification without your father by my side. I have decided to wait for him. Perhaps you and Mabu will one day find true purification. Live for each other, not for anyone else. I hope you make the right choices, my son. Live for each other, not for anyone else.
So you beat Kinky Knox? Wow! You've really gotten stronger! Kelmar hasn't come by yet today. If you want something, let me know, okay? Hey. So you're back. Well, did you meet the bird man? You say you beat Kiki Knock, but you probably just used the power of your demons, right? Well, I don't know about that purification, but you'll turn into a demon too, you know? <laughs> All the women of the village have been gossiping about you guys lately. Don't know the details, because I hate that kind of stuff. Mother Garai and Mabu are still doing okay, right? Well, I guess they should be, but... I've been hearing some weird stuff at the mill in the square. I can't really make sense of it, though. All the women of the... Oh, you haven't heard? Sorry about that. I was planning on telling you sometime. The divine barrier's been broken, and that's how come the demons started to attack the village. That's scary enough. But then there's that matter of me and Kiki Knock. <laughs> Please, no, don't tell my parents, okay? Going into the forest without their permission is bad enough. You know, if they found out I was friends with a demon... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did uh, Kiki Knock tell you all about himself? All that stuff about gods and fairies? He's fun to listen to. But I suppose you don't have the time. What? You don't believe what Kiki Knock says? How could he think up such garbage? How could he be so powerful? He's always bragging like that. Yeah, I guess so. Of course. Don't you think so? Everyone has changed since that chaos brought on by the Oni Boo Boo. Of course, no one wants to die. That's why they sent a cocoon master into the forest, right? And Mabu is risking her life to purify the demon curses. I know it's for the sake of the village, but... I hear the demon's curse can warp a person's heart. Maybe what really needs to be purified is our own hearts, though. Everyone has changed since...
Margo. I'm afraid I haven't seen her lately. What is it? Marital problems, eh? She's always been strong-minded, more than any other child in Cyrus. Even the Nagi are the children of man. Although Mabu can purify demon spirits, she cannot soothe her own heart. Only you can do that. a really strong-willed child. She hasn't changed, has she? No matter how frightening my stories were, she would just clench her teeth and never shed a tear. Her face, it was so cute, I'll never forget it. Once upon a time, this forest was a paradise for the divine spirits who served Elrim, god of the forest. The forest people are the incarnation of Mamon, the divine spirit of knowledge. When the divine spirits created man, it was Mamon who bestowed knowledge upon them. But man used his knowledge for the pursuit of ruin. In the end, Gehenna Palais was destroyed because man aroused Elrim's wrath. Bestowing knowledge upon man troubled Mamon greatly. In order to prevent the mortals from causing further destruction, to this day he lives in the forest, protecting it from the foolish ways of man. If you act not in destructive ways, surely Mamon shall bestow upon you valuable knowledge. We are in good hands with you as our cocoon master. Come again any time. Hmm, the wind is blowing again. It's almost as if the forest weeps. I'm afraid something terrible will happen.
Isn't friendship great? <laughs> I felt it, the proof of our friendship. Well, shall we begin? You're as strong as ever. Well then, perhaps I should thank you by telling you about myself. The story brings tears to those who hear it, and even to those who tell it. I sure hope you brought some tissues. I was once an agent of Elru. That is to say, I was a divine spirit, understand? Elrum entrusted us divine spirits with bringing life to the forest. We created man, other life, everything that lives. So what do you think? Pretty good, eh? Do you like me more now? I'll save the rest for next time. Well, see you later. Friendship great. <laughs> I felt it, the proof of our friendship. Well, shall we begin? Impressive, you're as strong as ever. Well, let me tell you some more about my favorite subject, me. You see, it was fun creating life and all. But unfortunately, we got so bored with it, we totally ran out of ideas. So we decided to create a thinking creature like us. It would be someone we could play with. Great idea, huh? I know, I'm so smart. 
But that guy Elrum grew angry with us. Apocryphal, he said. You must promise, he said. He got so annoying, you know. And then guess what? <laughs> you want to know? Well, we'll leave it for next time. Friendship great. <laughs> I felt it, the proof of our friendship. Well, shall we begin? Impressive. You're as strong as ever. Well, let me tell you some more about my favorite subject, me. Elrum complained so much, but in the end, we created it. The result was you, the beasts of knowledge. In other words, we are your true parents. Later, however, it gets so bad. We shouldn't have made any promises, you know? Huh? What promise? <laughs> you want to know? Let's leave that for next time. Friendship great. <laughs> I felt it, the proof of our friendship. Well, shall we begin? Impressive. You're as strong as ever. Well, let me tell you some more about my favorite subject, me. When we created you, we made a promise to Elrum. We promised we wouldn't fall in love with the beast. I thought it was so stupid. I mean, who could fall in love with a the beast they made? But you know, girls can be so cute. I have good taste in women, you know. I couldn't control myself, and wham, bam, what a fool I am. The result is what you see right here, a mere shadow of my former self. Then again, this is fun too, you know. Come back again. Next time, I'll have something for you.
Isn't friendship great? <laughs> I felt it, the proof of our friendship. Well, shall we begin? like a son to me now, aren't you? Can't blame you, the wandering bird man of freedom and adventure. I'm just too exciting for a country boy like you. What? I didn't promise you anything. Hey, 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 I'm joking. Take this. It is a very special item. Use it as you please. Sorry I took so much of your time. I know you're busy. I just felt so strange. I need to be more like a cocoon master's wife. I shouldn't be complaining while you're out fighting in the forest. 